So I saw a thread about the creepiest things you've ever done. But it got me thinking. What's the creepiest thing that's ever happened to you? I was 9 at the time sitting in my parents car in a parking lot of Kmart. Me being my inquisitive self I would look around the lot at other cars and the goings and comings. Soon enough a red pickup truck pulled up beside me with a quite disheveled looking man sitting behind the wheel. I just stared at him because he had a look of great sadness within his eyes. He stared blankly at the dash for a while. After some time he starts yelling and then breaks down into tears. Immediately after breaking into tears he reaches into the glove compartment and pulls out a pistol. He checks the magazine and points it into the roof of his mouth and starts screaming names. Names of his kids I guess. He does this for a few more minutes until he realizes a 9 year old boy is staring lockjawed at him. He just stares at me with the gun in his lap and then smiles and blows me a kiss. He left some time after the staring contest. My dad came back from the store and asked why I looked so pale. I didn't say a word until we got home and I immediately vomited into the toilet feeling so nervous about the entire thing. Holy moly I wonder if he went through with it, or if you randomly being there made him stop and reconsider. I broke up with a girl and told her no I don't still want to be friends or talk to her or anything. Two months later she burned her house down so that I would talk to her again. She came up to me in school and told me that she did it because she missed me and wanted me back. I don't care if this happened long times ago you start freaking running now. My girlfriend is a sleepwalker. It only really comes on when she's incredibly exhausted or stress out. We had just come back from Tokyo. First night back in our bed. I got up to take a leak and when I turned around. She was standing in the door. Eyes semi open but glazed over. Face slack. She surprised me. But I thought she just needed to use the bathroom. But she just stood there and wouldn't let me pass until I spoke to her. Hey. We have to get out of here. They're coming for us. The hairs on my neck immediately stood up. The way she said it was so cold and mechanical. It was like it wasn't even her voice. That's when I realized she was sleepwalking. Go back to bed. Okay. And she spun around and shuffled off to bed. I know it doesn't sound like much. But it was so creepy. It's like she was possessed. I didn't even get back in the bed with her. I went into the living room and slept on the couch. AOL chat room when I was 15. Some douche starts douching. Insulting everyone. I found cyber fights entertaining back then. So I go with it. After the while. He tells me my address. Full name. And a link with a picture of me on it from my old school's website that I didn't even know about. And said he's going to kill me. I machoed up saying bring it, and slept with a weapon handy, and still do. He never showed up as far as I know, and I'm pretty sure I'm still alive. This happened to me and a friend. She was on some goth vampire chat room, and called some guy a fuckface. Then he described where we were, what the house looked like, and said he could see us in the window, which we were actually next to. We were both so freaked out, we didn't sleep. Nothing happened. But it was really creepy at the time. I still don't know how he was so accurate. When I was 17 I had to do a work study program for a charity that dealt with retarded people in their 20 year and 30s. I worked with a 34 year old retarded man named Ryan. I spent 3 weeks training him to do simple person to person interactions so he could be a Walmart greeter or something. I came home after a session to find police at my house as well as ambulances in the driveway. The cops told me my mother was fine but she had been attacked and cut on her right arm. It turns out that the police were called when Ryan couldn't be contacted. It turns out he had been masturbating to pictures of me. He wanted my picture to show his mom or something. And he had become obsessed to the point where he walked into my house when I was gone with a knife. Probably to attack violate me. The most fricked up part of the story is that while he was obviously mentally disabled it turns out that he wasn't mentally retarded but rather posing as a retarded person to meet high school boys. A guy was arrested in Norman, Oklahoma for faking a severe mental handicap so he could get people to take care of him, feed him, change diapers etc. so he could live out an adult baby fantasy. The band teacher at my high school hid in a towel room and masturbated to me and another guy showering just about every day until he was caught. When I was 15, I got a job at the local grocery store as a deli clerk. 
One day this older guy who was a semi-regular customer apparently decided to give me a gift one of those giant teddy bears you get as a prize at the midway. It was really dirty, and there was a hole in between its legs into which he had placed a gigantic black corn cob. The store manager called the cops and banned the guy from the store, but it was weeks before I stopped looking over my shoulder on my way home. I lived in the Middle East when I was in high school and one day as I was walking home from school and this old Arab man in an old Mercedes pulled up like he was lost and rolled down his windows and leaned out like he was about to ask for directions. So I walked over and he asks me if no if there's a massage parlor nearby. That immediately struck me as odd so I said I didn't know and walked on. But he kept up with me and said that since I there wasn't a massage parlor around maybe I could give him a massage. I ignored him and started walking faster and he starts offering me a lift home. I tell him to leave me alone and keep walking but he just keeps following me so I had to duck into the nearest house pretending it was mine and hid in their garden until I was sure the guy was gone and then continue on my way home. I am still suspicious of men in old Mercedes to this day. I'm a man in old Mercedes. Don't hate. It was my 16th birthday and my stepmom and I went to go get massages. After filling out some paperwork, they told us that there were no available females to do our massages. I'm a girl, so we both said we would be okay with guys. Through the whole massage the masseurs kept complimenting me and it was just generally awkward. He also asked how old I was, 16, and he said he was like 26. At the end of the massage he asked me for my phone number. It was super creepy, but I didn't want to be rude so I just said I didn't live in the state. A few weeks later, I get a bunch of missed calls on my phone with messages from the guy. He got my cell phone number off the release paperwork I filled out when we got to the massage place. I never returned any of his calls, but he continued to call me every so often for the next few months. While in college I came back to my apartment one afternoon to find some girl I didn't know in my living room. This wasn't all that unusual, as my roommates often had visitors at all hours, and she said she knew at least one of them. After some casual banter she announced she needed to go grocery shopping, and she offered to cook me dinner if I went with her and helped her out. She was kind of cute, so I decided to walk with her and see what happened. At the supermarket she asked me what I wanted to eat, and then invited me to her place where she cooked a meal for us. After dinner we fricked through the night into the wee hours. Taking a break from steamy times, we talked about random stuff. One of the things we talked about was a local guy our age who had apparently killed his parents and disappeared. The guy's whereabouts were at that time still unknown, and there was a massive police manhunt going on to locate him. Well, at one point the girl said I don't think he did it, she sounded so sure of this that I asked why she thought that, when all the news stories strongly suggested his guilt. To my shock she said because he is was my boyfriend. I realized then that I was in the bed of the girlfriend of a murderer at large. I didn't sleep the rest of the night for fear that a killer was going to jump out of the closet and hack me to bits. The next morning I politely excused myself and racked my brain the entire way back to my place about how and if I should distance myself from this person. On the one hand, she was attractive, cooked a nice meal and seemed to want to frick me. A big plus. On the other hand, she might have a jealous boyfriend who liked to kill people. The if part was answered when I got to my apartment to find my roommates all gathered in the living room. They'd been wondering where I'd been. Turns out some girl had seen me on the street and followed me home a day or so before, then come back and more or less invited herself in. The girl they were talking about was the girl who I had spent the night with. So the girlfriend of a murderer at large had stalked me and seduced me. She confirmed this a couple days later when I finally worked up the nerve to talk to her again. For the last time, the ex was found some weeks later he had indeed killed his family, and a couple more people along the way before he was captured. Movie worthy. When I was about 9, I was outside in front of my apartment with my brothers 3 and 6. We were sitting on a blanket having a pretend picnic. We see this guy in a baby blue van drive by. At first we think nothing of it but then he proceeds to drive by 3 or 4 more times. We notice he stops the van and he is staring at us. He waves us over to the van. I got freaked out and grabbed my brothers and went into the house and locked the door and told my mom what happened. Later on that night when we were watching the news, the guy we saw earlier was on the news for kidnapping a kid in our neighborhood. Creepy could have been us. 
I am a female who worked at GNC a couple years back and I had one kind of creepy encounter while I worked there. This 45-50-ish year old walks in, and I give the usual, how can I help you, yada yada. Well the guy ends up giving me his entire life story of how he lost his wife and kids because of alcohol and how he's turning over a new leaf in life. Also, I was pretty sure he was high drunk during this one-sided conversation, and it took forever for him to leave. About 2 hours after he leaves, the store phone rings, and my manager picks it up. Then he hands the phone to me. This same weirdo had memorized my name, from my name tag, and looked up the store phone number just to ask for me by name. Tell me I was cute, and ask me to go to the pool at his health club with him. Keep in mind that I only looked about 16 at the time. I told him no thanks, obviously, and that I was leaving town forever. Lol. My manager was more freaked out about it than I was though he thought it was my dad on the phone or something but when he realized it was some old creep he wouldn't let me close the store by myself for a while after that. You have a cool manager. He should have been freaked out by that. My friend and I were downtown one day and decided to eat lunch at a crappy food court in some old mall. Most of the places were closed down except a subway and a non-chain pizza place. We each ordered a slice of pepperoni and a fountain drink from the man behind the counter. The first thing that was weird was that he wasn't wearing a uniform, just plain clothes. The second thing that was off was that he charged us both two completely different prices, despite the fact that we each ordered the same thing. What we each paid was less than the listed price for our items on the menu. My friend and I laugh about it, eat our food and go on with our day. Half an hour later and we both sit down in a hotel lobby and each end up falling asleep at roughly the same time and waking up a good hour later. We're both freaked out that we would each fall asleep for no reason and both noticed that we felt pretty crappy. A few hours later we decided to get dinner at the subway at the food court. As we enter we notice that there are two new, freaked out looking people working at pizza place. They both are wearing uniforms. At the other exit of the food court, on the opposite side. We see paramedics taking a gurney to an ambulance. Strapped to the gurney is the man that served us our pizza. A janitor was mopping up some kind of mess in front of the pizza place. We both have no clue what had happened and were too weirded out to even want to know ask the people at the pizza place what the heck had happened. Not really to me exactly, but I was very much involved. My first year in college I started dating this ridiculously beautiful girl in my program. I had kind of stolen her from another guy also in the program but didn't think too much of it at first. They had been only casually dating. A mutual friend of ours tells me that this guy is very angry at me plans to kick my butt and blah blah blah. Nothing happens and I forget about the whole thing. One day a few weeks later she calls me, very distraught and tells me that while she was out, someone had broken into her place and stolen only a few pairs of her underwear. The thief had climbed in through her second story window, a very challenging featuring to say the least. The strangest thing was she lived with two other fantastic looking women from whom nothing was stolen. The thief even left the house without grabbing one of the many laptops, cameras and other valuables lying around the house. Needless to say she was very upset and stayed with me for about a week. The landlord had bars installed on the windows and the police got involved and a sketch of the perp was even made from some stuff the neighbors had seen. Then, a few weeks later, just around the time we have sort of forgotten about the whole fiasco, it happens again, only this time the guy had pried off the bars of the window and done the exactly the same thing, taking a few pieces of her underwear, and some bras, and nothing else. At this point she doesn't know what to do. The cops are no closer to finding out who is doing this so she pretty much moves into my place for security. After some time things settle down and we move on. She starts to feel safe again and we never hear from the thief again. Eventually we break up, become friends. I graduate and yada yada yada. Fast forward one year, a good friend of mine, who is a girl, who has no relation at all to and has never even met. The girl mentioned above confesses to me that when she was young, like 7 or so, she was physically shamed by a family friend and far three sons. This is obviously very hard on her and I'm the first person she has ever told etc. Well, turns out that one of the sons who had abused her is the same dude who I sneaked the girl from back in college. So instantly my mind starts piecing together the portrait of a deranged panty sniffing diddler ex lover out for my blood and my ex. Girlfriend's underpants. 
I have never told anyone the connection between these two separate events and have no idea what to do about it. I'm sworn to secrecy with both girls about this info as it's pretty serious stuff. That guy still walks among us. I see him every once in a while but have no idea what to say do as I have no proof. TL. DR. My life becomes the center of a huge theft panty sniffing child abuse conspiracy. I was in bed one night, drifting off in the darkness of my bedroom. I couldn't quite get to sleep though. The weather was warm and my room was getting a little stuffy so I went to open my window up and let some air in. I went back to bed, staring at the ceiling, hoping I would fall asleep out of sheer boredom. That was when I heard the sound downstairs. Now I wasn't yet asleep, and thinking that it could be a burglar or something my heart started thumping. You know the feeling, when fight or flight kicks in. When I was younger I went on work experience at my granddad's sheet metal work factory. One of my best memories of this bonding was when we both made an axe at the workshop, which he let me take home. So I reached for this axe, this little hand axe I had made years ago, and creeped out of my room in the nude. There's that sound again, this time closer. It was dark and I didn't want to alert the burglar so I stood at the top of the stairs, in the nude, in the dark and with this little hand axe raised shoulder height. I had no idea what I was going to do with it. Could I really have killed or maimed someone with it? I don't know. Anyway, I hear these quiet footsteps moving up the stairs. Whoever it was really didn't want to be heard. Whoever it is, whatever it is, it is only a few steps away from me now. I'm aware of it, but it's not aware of me. 3. Closer. 2. Closer still. 1. I switched on the light and with my hand axe held high, screaming at the top of my lungs I am met with another naked man. The fear of God seared on his face, also screaming. My mother's friend, whom she had been seeing without me knowing for months, after she broke up with my father. I am amazed how he didn't fall backwards down the stairs. Looking back at this though make me laugh. Two naked men screaming at the top of a staircase, one with a freaking hand axe, both of us almost crapping ourselves with fear. TLDR. I nearly killed someone at the top of my stairs with my self-made hand axe, in the nude. Creepy at the time, but hilarious in hindsight. Also, now you get to picture him nailing your mom and he gets to picture you killing him with an axe every time you guys see each other. When I was about 7, I was at a store. And I was looking at little packets of confetti on the bottom shelf. I felt someone standing directly behind me. And when I looked up, some man had his dong out right behind my head. It scared the crap out of me. I ran to find my mother. But I wouldn't tell her what happened. I had totally forgotten about this until I read this thread. Now I have to repress it all over again. Thanks a lot, man. I was celebrating my friend's birthday one night down on a nude beach. We're not nudists, it's right in the backyard of my school. I'm walking down the beach with my friends, when suddenly, a silhouetted figure walks at our same pace about 15 feet away, then 10 feet away. At 5 feet, we notice he's not wearing any pants and he's stroking something. We walk for about 30 seconds and notice it's his erect dong that he's stroking, plus he's staring at us. At this point, we're on the offensive and hedging into our pantsless dong pleasuring predator's comfort zone. We walk so close that he gets uncomfortable and goes closer to the waterline. We eventually herd him into the water, at which point he said two words, go away, and we promptly do. He leaves us alone and we him, then we proceed to never speak of that moment again. Lol I think you guys creeped him out more than the other way around. Kudos to you having the only story to turn it around like that. For this you should be on top. Sadly I can only upvote once. Girl that was stalking me for years sent me this text message. Comma I walked into your house this morning. Comma I brought the gun from our end table. Comma your blood was strewn across the walls. Comma they'll find you on your bathroom floor when I'm done. Those are a day to remember lyrics. But still extremely unsettling. And probably the creepiest thing that's happened to me. I'm pretty sure I'd report that. I was living in San Diego in a large apartment complex. I said hi to a random guy out walking his dog while walking to the shared laundry. The next morning I found a note under my windshield wiper from the guy offering a discreet BJ and his apartment number. The creepy part was he knew which vehicle was mine. I moved shortly after for unrelated reasons. Stay classy, San Diego. I've had a few creepy things happen. 
but this one sticks out for some reason. I broke into an abandoned trailer in the woods when I was a kid with a couple friends. We never saw any cars in the driveway or signs of people living there. There were warning signs everywhere and a bunch of papers on the door saying it was protected and the consequences of being caught breaking in, etc etc. After breaking through the boarded up windows we found a bunch of guns, stuffed animals and pictures with only the same little kid in them. That trailer is still there. I was in my room with the window open one night when I was about 10, playing video games when all of a sudden I hear the creepiest laugh ever directly outside of my window, which overlooks our porch. It sounds like whoever it is is right to the side of my window as I see nobody there, but I am still freaked out enough that I go downstairs where my family is watching television. A few years later, we catch our creepy old neighbor walking around our property late at night and this leads to several encounters involving the police. One day, after my father almost beats this guy to death for shooting our dog, I hear him laugh and immediately recognize this laugh as the one I heard that night. Seriously, it was one of those old, haunting, toothless mouthed laughs that evil rednecks have in horror films right before they violate and murder somebody, just full of maliciousness and hatred. Just thinking about it now is kind of creeping me out. Things to get, you, my little pretty, your little dog too. A few years ago a show ran called Crime Investigation Australia which was a surprisingly well made series about famous Australian killers and the process of bringing them to justice. I got really into it and spent a lot of time ruminating about how horrible it would be to be kidnapped and murdered, knowing you were powerless to stop it because they had tied you up or something. Well. Cut to me waking up in a daze, completely disorientated and with no idea where I was. I look around, and I'm in a blank white box with no doors or windows. Sound starts to filter into my head and I realize I can hear a roaring car engine. The car takes a turn and I slam into the wall of the box. It hits me. I'm being freaking kidnapped. I start pounding on the walls and screaming for help. After less than a minute the car grinds to a halt and I hear footsteps moving along the side of the vehicle. A camouflage door opens and a policewoman is standing there with a stern look on her face. Turns out I blacked out at an end of exams party and passed out on the sidewalk before I got home. Two lovely policewomen stuck me in a paddy wagon and spent the next hour driving me around trying to find my house. My it still said I lived in a dorm but I'd moved off 6 months earlier and the Raz they had no idea of my new address. My kidnapping was just me coming to in the back of the paddy wagon. In the end, they got through to one of my friends on my phone, one of the few who weren't too s faced to say my address, and dropped me back at my place, considering it would have saved them masses of time and hassle just to throw me in the drunk tank overnight. I was hugely grateful and sent their station a very sincere thank you letter. At the aquarium when I was still in elementary school, there was an exhibit on plankton, with binocular microscopes. I was looking into one of the microscopes. Suddenly my hand is yanked from the side of the microscope and my hand instantly feels warm and slimy. I look up to see a retarded girl holding my hand in her mouth. I cannot adequately describe my reaction in bullet points. This is how stories should be posted for us slow minded redditors. It was about 1am and I walked to a casino across the street from a bar to take a pee and sober up a bit. I was taking the escalator upstairs when this old guy, 60 plus, walks up to me and tells me about this room he's got upstairs, and how I'm invited to come up with him. I decline, and at the top of the escalator I make a beeline to the bathroom and into a stall. I come out of the stall, and he's standing there at a urinal looking at me, kinda facing me, with his dong in his hand. While going to college, I used to work at a drive through espresso stand in an industrial area near Tacoma. I was your usual bubbly blonde barista who excelled in small talk and boosting egos. It helped the tip jar of course. So one day, I get a much older looking gentleman, not a day younger than 60, who stops by and orders a can of Diet Coke which goes for one dollar. He gives me one dollar and put five dollars in my tip jar. Not the first time so no big deal, but I'll definitely remember him next time. He continues to come by 2-3 times per week. Always when I'm in the stand, customers would watch for our cars if they preferred a barista. He still gets the $1 coke and tips me $5. Nice man. Always easy to talk to. Never came on to me. Eventually he bumped it up to a $20 tip and I started getting nervous. 
I always want to think the best of people and I definitely treated him like I wasn't bothered but something was definitely awry. Valentine's Day comes up and I'm working. My $1 coke man drives up and I go to the back to grab his drink. When I come up to the window, there laying for me was a box of chocolates, two dozen roses, and $100. I was freaked out. I didn't even know how to react. I thanked him for the chocolates and the flowers refused the money, but he stuck it into my tip jar before driving off. At this time, school was overwhelming anyway so I came to the decision that things just weren't safe for me there and my 30 hours per week schedule was too overwhelming. I loved the job so much and was sad to leave but I gave my 2 weeks notice. For the following weeks the $1 coke man continued to come by, get his $1 coke and tip me $100. I kept asking my boss for advice on how to handle the situation but she laugh it off and tell me just to take the money. I probably could have handled the situation better but I was too shy to say no. On my very last day, mind you, I never told anyone I was leaving for my own safety. The $1 coke man came by, ordered his coke, tipped me $100, and before he left he asked me what I was doing that weekend and if I'd like to go out with him. Let me cite my earlier comment on being shy and not being able to say no. I did in fact avoid saying no in this situation too. I said I had to wait for the schedule to come out from work and work around my school schedule and I let him know next time. At the end of the day, I blacked out every bit of information about me, wrote notes to everyone who would come after me to never give out any of my information, locked up and left. I believe I made about $1000 off that man. It was such an awful situation that haunts me to this day. It's entirely possible that he gave money not as a failed attempt at courtship, but rather as an attempt to manipulate you through guilt. I was walking home once alone when I was 10 or so, and a man asks if I'd seen a dog from a giant SUV. I said no. He asked if I wanted to hop in the car and look with him aka let him touch little Alanis. I said no because it was Saturday and I was an orthodox Jew. It only dawned on my much later what would have happened. Orthodox Judaism TM. Saving children the world over. This didn't necessarily happen to me, but it was creepy nonetheless. I had just gotten off work and was home playing video games with my roommate when I get a call from my then girlfriend. She waited tables back then and worked late hours. Had to deal with a lot of creepy buttholes. Anyway, she had been on the way to my apartment when she realized that she was being followed by the same car that had been parked outside the restaurant the past two nights she'd gotten off. The occupant just sat in the car smoking, watching the waitresses get in their cars and go home. The creepy mother. The first thing I ask her is if she's sure he's following her, which she is. She took a rather erratic route, and he stuck close behind her. The next thing I ask her is why the frick she called me instead of calling the cops first since they could provide much more immediate assistance than I could. I tell her to call the cops and head toward my house. If the cops hadn't pulled him over by the time she got to my place, me and my roommate would be waiting for him with decorative katanas. We hang up, she calls the cops, then calls back until they pull him over behind her. They search his car and find rope, knives, and drugs in the back seat. He gets arrested for intent to violate. I get a BJ for my intended heroism. Just interjecting to say that I would totally pee in a cup and watch someone drink it for $400. I don't have $400. Better drink my own pee. I posted one creepy thing that had happened, but I thought I would post by far the creepiest. A note, I was 13 at the time. It was late at night, and I have always had a wild imagination. My old bedroom faces the door at the top of our stairs, and into my parents' bedroom. One night my mom was at work and dad was visiting my grandmother, so I was in my room, listening to Backstreet Boys or something, and heard someone coming up the stairs. We don't lock our doors in our neighborhood. When I looked, it was my dad, in his usual PJS. I said goodnight, but he never faced me, just went into the bedroom and that was it. I went back to whatever I was doing. Half an hour later, I heard someone else coming up the stairs, and when I looked, it was my dad fully clothed, wearing his jacket. He asked me how my night went, and I just went pale. To this day, we cannot figure out what happened. He checked the house, and no one was there. But, our house has been known for being haunted. 
if you believe in that. We've had several people leave our house because it just didn't feel right, and some out of ordinary things have happened. That could only be explained with far-fetched reasoning. I never stayed in my house by myself after that. It seems a ghost was trying desperately to sleep with your mother. Seriously though, this one freaked me out. Far-fetched or not. Me and my friend used to go to Subway. A lot. Every weekend or half day of school we would go down and eat lunch there. We even ate dinner there a few times. Eventually the people working there started recognizing us. Had our orders ready when we came. All that stuff. So one day in the middle of the summer, we see this old guy, minding his own business, sitting at a booth eating his sandwich. My friend and I get our sandwiches, and we take the booth in front of him. So the way this was set up was that I was facing the old guy, but my friend was in between us, facing away from him and facing me. So when we sit down at the table, I see the old guy look up, and he just starts staring at my friend. My friend obviously doesn't notice, so I try to inconspicuously say hey that dude behind you is kinda staring at you. My friend turns around, and the guy looks back down to his sandwich, pretending nothing happens. My friend turns back around, making a kind of creeped out face, but we quickly dismiss it. The old dude leaves later. A couple of days later, we come back, and the old guy isn't there. We eat our sandwiches, and later on I'll look to my right, and right through this glass wall type thing, is the old guy just standing there, staring at my friend. We tell the people working there, and they call the cops. But the old guy sees them so he gets in his car and drives away so they put off the call. Next day, me and my friend are eating there again we wouldn't give up that place over some creepy old guy. And the employees had specific orders to call the cops if they ever see that old guy around. So a couple of customers come in while me and my friend are eating. And the workers there are busy. So I look down to take a bite of my sandwich. And suddenly when I look up I see the old guy walking briskly over to my friend. I start to say watch out but before I finish the first word, the old guy grabs my friend by the chest and his back, and tries to drag him out of the booth, saying some incomprehensible jabber. I was freaking scared as crap, and my friend was too, so acting out of pure adrenaline I throw my hot meatball marinara, maybe something else, it had hot marinara sauce though, at his face and the sauce hits his eyes and blinds him, he was blinded and started screaming everyone else by this point was frozen in shock, so I get up and punch him right in the jaw, and he falls unconscious, I never thought I would be able to throw a punch that hard but adrenaline is freaking crazy, the old guy was eventually arrested and we got free sandwiches there until they decided to relocate 3 stores down for a bigger store area and went under new management, it was a good run while it lasted though, we're both guys btw, tl, dr, Old guy stalks me and my friend at subway, tries to grab my friend, I knock him out and we get free sandwiches. I love this story. I was stopped at a red light at the corner of Mass Ave and Comave in Boston and Huey Lewis, yes, it was Huey Lewis, walked by, stopped, then turned and walked up to me and said the devil is sitting in your back seat, and then he walked away. Sounds like he was on some sort of new drug. I was getting my teeth cleaned at a dentist office I had never been to as I had just moved to San Francisco. The dentist was older I'd say in his 60s, chatty, and had some talk radio on. The chair I was sitting on had a donut headrest and I was basically laying all the way back. He was wheeling around on a stool telling my I had beautiful teeth. Then I feel this spongy tube rub up on the back of my head. At first I didn't realize what it was. Then when I did I thought it must have been an accident so I didn't say anything and the dentist didn't acknowledge it so I'll let it pass. It happened again and I shot him a look like what the frick. And he still didn't acknowledge it so I figured I was just imagining things and the checkup continued without incident. Without when I got up to leave he told me to make an appointment for my 6 month checkup now and extended his hand in the gesture of a shake. I had never shook my dentist or doctor's hand before but figure he's just being polite so I take his hand and he pulls me in for the shake hug. He lets go and I walk out of the office and the receptionist asks if would like to make an appointment for my next checkup and decline and walk home confused about what just happened. I had just turned 21 and I was living in a sketchy apartment. My boyfriend dropped me off 
and there was a goddamn junkie just sitting on the couch. Junkie explains that he's there with our other roommate's permission. And of course the roommate wasn't home at the time to check the story. My BF was somewhat of a jerk. And was always going on about how I couldn't treat him like my best friend. So I didn't call him to rescue me. Junkie asks for a tour of the house. And seems super interested in the laundry room. Which only has one door. I foolishly went in ahead of him. And he followed me. I thought. Well. I'm gonna get debauched. For being stupid. Instead. He peered at the washer and asked me a bunch of detailed questions about how to operate it. I quickly retreated to my bedroom, which mercifully had a lock on the door. My pint of maker's mark was safe and sound behind my books. No one in that flop house was interested in reading so I sat up all night sipping bourbon and listening to the junkie do his laundry. I figured it was just the weirdest scam in history. But no, junkie was an invited guest. Frick that place. The next day, I related all this to my BF, and he was horrified that I didn't call him. BTW. It's a tie. When I was 15, I was spending the night at my mom's house. My sister, 12 at the time, was having a sleepover. They kept giving me different drinks, all of which tasted really funny, but hey free drinks right? Turns out they were putting small amounts of vodka in each one, and I got drunk and passed out. I wake up at 3am with 4 12 year old girls playing with my junk. I never said a word about that until now. When I was 17, I was dating a girl who was pretty crazy, but I did not know how crazy until I went to take a pee at her house. She had her own private bathroom, and for some reason I was compelled to floss my teeth. First drawer I opened and I see an effigy of me, made from my own hair. She had yet to come over to my house, at least with my knowledge. Having been one, I can attest that 12 year old girls in large groups are absolutely terrifying. When I was maybe 7 or 8, I had long hair. I am a boy. It was maybe down to my shoulders. My mother and I were getting Chinese food for our family. My mother was at the counter ordering. I was laying on my stomach on a chair. I am not sure if I sat next to the old man, or he sat next to me. Well he started talking to me think that I was a little girl. I was lying face down, so he could not see that I was in fact a boy. I was kind of ignoring him, and being creeped out at the same time. Well he asked me if I would give him a kiss. At that point I turned my head to face up, and his face was right above mine. I remember him having a disgusted face when he realized that I was a little boy instead of a little girl. I ran over to my mother really creeped out. I have never told anyone about this until now. The day after a big night drinking with friends, I decide on Hungry Jack's, Burger King, for lunch. Unfortunately the burrito from the previous night reminded me I needed to use the bathroom, so instead of ordering I head to the men's. I hear some noise and upon entering see a tall skinny teen with glasses fumbling with the soap dispenser. It's not working. I didn't break it, he says to me. I let him know it's fine and that I don't care. So he's there just standing confused and asks me, so what should I do now? I don't know rinse your hands in the basin, whatever I tell him. At this point I'm sure that I'm going to shut at any second and the cubicle is still occupied. Have you seen Super 8 yet? The teenager asks me, standing between myself and the cubicle door. After some more confusion I realize he is asking me about a movie I hadn't yet seen. He must have thought I was waiting for the urinal, because he said I was free to go ahead. At this point I just want him to leave, but he just stands there looking at me. I'm Fergus. Nice to meet you he says whilst extending his arm for a handshake. No no number. I had to apologize for not wanting to shake the hands he made a point of not being able to wash with soap. He leaves after this. This is more of the most awkward thing that's happened to me rather than the creepiest go. Comma so he sits there just standing. Yes, I understand. When I was 16 I started working at McDonald's. One night I was working until 10pm. One of my co-workers had gotten off at 7 and was waiting in the car. Around 10.10 I go start my car and started waiting for my car to defrost. This guy gets out of his car that he's been waiting in and says forget something and then starts scraping the ice of my windows. He finishes. I mumble thanks. Then he just stares at me. He looks like he wants to say something. But I just get in the car and head home. He follows. Which I don't freak out about. Because he lives on the same highway I do. Whatever. I pull into my driveway. 
so does he. WTF. I decide to run into the house. Hey Kurlaska. Wait. Stop I stop. He grabs my both my elbows. Pushes me against the car and says. Will you go to the prom with me I say no. He refuses to let me leave until I say yes. I decide to accept his invitation and then call him tomorrow and cancel when he's not freaking me out. I didn't cancel. We started dating. Now we are happily married. It's still a freaking creepy way to ask someone out. But now it's a cute how we met story. Everything turned out more WTF are you thinking than expected. Two of my female friends and I were walking home from the beach one night. I'm a girl too. We're 15 and stupid and feeling pretty invincible. We decide to take a shortcut along this gravel path that cuts through a wooded area near our houses. Maybe about 500 featuring of isolated, unlit road only wide enough for the three of us to walk side by side. About halfway along the path, the friend on my right screams and falls over, knocking over my other friend as she goes down. I'm freaked so I just start running, but after going about 20 paces I realize that my friends aren't following so I stop and turn around. All I see is this silhouette bent over my two friends who are still tangled up on the ground. I call out to them, something like you guys okay the silhouette looks up, turns, and runs off into the bushes. At this point, my friends are up off the ground and we run home as fast as possible. We debated for a couple of hours whether we should call the cops or not, but we were dumb and young and we somehow managed to convince ourselves that he meant us no harm. Probably because the alternative was just a frightening to consider. A couple of years later a 12 year old girl was violated on that path. I still feel guilt for not telling someone. It's a very small town. At the very least. Putting the word out that the path was unsafe and too dark at night might have convinced someone to install some lighting. Something. TL. DR. Guy lingers in the bushes. Tries to grab my friend. Yikes. I guess you guys didn't really want to tell others because of your personal reasons but not your fault that after a couple of years someone was violated there. The police would not have done anything. It is not enough to say a person attacked you. Again not your fault. Lighting would have just made the person violate someone elsewhere. Get over your secret silly. I have a really good one. One night. I was chilling in my basement during the summer at around midnight. Parents are asleep. I am on AIM talking to people when I get an IM from someone named Stalker Dude 314. It said something like, I am outside your house blah blah blah. I figured it was just one of my friends playing a really annoying trick and talked to the person for a little bit. I went to bed after blocking the guy because things got too creepy for my 6th grade brain to handle. Next day comes. Dad wakes up at 5am to go to work. He gets ready and walks out to the car and sees some gold truck sitting at bottom of our driveway. It turns on and books it away. He hops his butt in the car and drives after them for a while and ends up losing them. I didn't tell my parents about the AIM thing for a couple days. We also saw a ton of footprints in the grass leading up to our house and stuff. Freaking. Scary. Crap. 10th grade Spanish class. This girl. We'll call her Sam. Since that's her name and I harbor an unreasonable paranoia that someone will read this and say I know who he's talking about, sat in front of me. I had kinda known her since 5th grade, but we were never really friends. She was just someone I knew from school. Now, she was quite an unfortunate looking individual. Fat, paste white, full out emo rocker monster thing. Smelled funny, too. Anyways, all the time in class. She'd keep turning around and annoying me. She'd keep talking to me. Kinda get in the way of my work. And she did this thing where she'd lean her head back on my desk. Her hair would get all over my papers. Giving me a full view of hex cleavage. I was a nice, quiet kid back then. So I didn't really know what to do. I just stayed polite and tried to get on with things. Then, one freaking day, after class. She was hitting on me after class. But she was holding her arms weird. Like... You know how your default posture has your wrist facing your torso? She had her wrists turned out towards me. That's when I noticed. The scars on her blubbery forearms spelled out love. Not a good way to express your feelings. TLDR. Girl that had a crush on me carved love into her arm. <laughs> Discovered someone was using my underwear as schlick schlick material. Got a note one day in the laundry room on my boxes saying she was sorry they were gone so long. She had to clean out the blood, yay.
Yay. That's not what she was using them for. Many years ago I was in Boy Scouts, and our troop was going on a camping trip to a summer camp that was closed in the winter. We'd gotten permission, and we'd planned to hike in. Myself and another scout went up there the day before so we could set up the rifle shotgun range. We had just finished setting up as it was getting dark, when we noticed what looked like a set of glowing eyes down the hill from us. No big deal, probably a coyote or something, except that, even though they moved, they never blinked and never left the area. After several minutes we started to freak out. This is the point where I tell you that we'd watched the Blair Witch Project the week prior, and were all of 15 and 16. Our rational brains were trying to come up with explanations for what we were seeing, but our reptilian hind brain was screaming so loud we couldn't think. Ended up in the back of my friend's explorer, each of us with a loaded shotgun and a loaded rifle. We laid there for about an hour scared to death, and that's when someone else went over to the building on the other side of the lake and turned off the light. The eyes immediately disappeared. Once we realized we were only looking at a reflection, we felt insanely stupid. We never told anyone, either. Aha but you just told me and I plan on telling everyone. Was at the mall one time with a friend of mine. He had just got his first car and I was about 14-15 at the time and he was 16. A white van without windows pulls up behind us in the parking lot and a guy pokes his head out the side window. Hey kid, you like music? Come here. My friend and I are creeped out. I politely tell them no. You like stereos man? We got stuff for you for cheap. Just come here. At this point he was being really insistent we get near the van. And his story of whatever items he had inside of it kept changing. Finally I get the feeling I should just get the frick out of the parking lot and go inside. I tell my friend we're going to be late and start jogging in and he follows. I'm still not sure if we were going to get kidnapped or if it was some guy trying to sell stolen merchandise. When I was in 6th grade, so about 10 or 11 years old, for a period of about 2 weeks, this guy would follow me while I was walking from the bus stop back to my home. It was creepy as crap. But then he just stopped one day, thankfully. Oh, just thought of another good one. A couple of years ago, I was at my house with my girlfriend. I had to go to class that day, so I left her alone at my house to do some homework and I'd be back in a couple of hours. My truck was low on gas, so I borrowed my mom's car. She carpooled with dad. I always cut my phone off during class, so when I get out I have a voicemail from my best friend. Dude, if you didn't wanna hang out and just wanted to frick. Girlfriend's name. All you had to do was say so. It's messed up that you just avoided me. Obviously, I had no idea what the crap he was talking about. I called my girlfriend. Yeah, best friend's name. Stopped by and asked if you were here. But I told him you went to class in your mom's car. Ha. Huh. After being ignored several times by my angry BFF. He finally picked up and told me what happened. He was driving down my street, which was a dead end, and saw me standing in my driveway staring at my girlfriend's car. He said it was unmistakable. Brown hair. Broad shouldered. Black sweater. Glasses. When he saw me, he stuck his head out his window and yelled at me waving excitedly like a dumbass. My doppelganger looked up and ran around the side of the house. My friend followed and entered through the side door, expecting me to be inside. He asked my girlfriend where I was and he looked all through the house. I explained that I really did go to class that day. My first thought was that my girlfriend was cheating on me at my freaking house. But she said she just heard some weird noises outside. Then, best friend, came in. So she just attributed those sounds to him. Two weeks later, my dad found a bag of C next to the bushes near that side of our house. A big picket fence separates us from the neighbors on the street perpendicular to us. And their sketches freak. Who knows the whole story. TL. DR. My angry best friend potentially and inadvertently saved my girlfriend's life from my drug dealing doppelganger. I had a neighbor once who used to stand in his backyard and use binoculars to try and look in my windows. I never noticed him there. My sister's boyfriend went out to smoke one day and caught him doing it. We called the police and they took a report. But there wasn't much they could do. I don't know if they even talked to him. I moved out of that place as soon as my lease was up. You have been visited by the wisdom papa type study well papa or you will fail your next text at school. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.